When the Gobble Girls came to visit, Prudence ran to the forest. It was just too much mayhem for a shy little deer. But these feathered females actually came with escorts this time. As up on the hill, two hefty bodyguards kept watch. That's right, the boys were back in town. Seems to happen every spring. And they had plenty of bling to show off. Now I gotta admit, those flashy feathers are real eye candy. But decorating your face with fake genitalia? You know, I think that only works in the turkey world. I sure hope it doesn't catch on with humans. But it was time to end this show, as I had a lot of work to do. Well, the view from this window is pretty awesome, but it's my intention today to make it even better. Although it looks really inviting out there, it was actually minus 10 Celsius this morning, which means it was minus 10 Celsius inside the cabin as well. I've got the wood stove crackling away there. It's going to warm it up so I can work here again. Now, uh, in the last video, I reintroduced this section. It's going to be the kitchen area and dining area. And uh, I've drywalled and restored this wall before. Uh, but what I need to do now is put some trim on it and paneling. I had acquired some pine from a mill before the price of diesel went up. These have doubled in price, so I was lucky there. Uh, this was rough pine. I sanded it down. I put a polyurethane stain on it. And now it looks really good. Nice and smooth. Uh, really brought out the grain. So I've got enough to do at least two sides, and I'm going to start on this one first. Uh, also in the last video I showed that there was a corner cupboard that I salvaged and put up there. Didn't like it, got rid of it, and also this countertop which went right across. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's not, it's not the way it is right now, it's just not going to fit. I've moved it out of the way at least so that I can start working on the paneling. And I'm going to start on this wall, uh, putting paneling across. And for the top, I still have some weathered board from the uh, demolition. And I can put this up here and around the back as well. It's starting to warm up. I think I'm ready to, to start. I've got to take the covers off the electrical outlets. And then the work will begin. To start this wall off, I've got to start with the lower boards first because everything else is dependent on these being perfectly true. And uh, it's not that easy because the floor isn't true. I've got this first one up on uh, these uh, pieces of drywall as spacers so that I can still allow for the flooring. But what I discovered is, you can see there's that gap right here and there's a gap right here. The floor is not level and to compensate, and I know that these, I've cut these at perfectly at 90 degree angles. When I bring that up, that's how much it's off, about a half an inch. So rather than make another half inch gap down here, what I'm gonna have to do is trim this bottom piece at an angle. It's a bit of a pain, however, I gotta start off right, or it's gonna be a little bit of a problem I'm trying to get the other ones, especially when I get to the window and found out one's crooked. So, gotta fix it right off the bat.
I used quite a variety of power tools for this reno, including an oscillating tool to cut out right angle holes. Now here's a little tip. If you actually have an existing wall and you want to put hardwood paneling on it, you know, especially if it's a little thick, you do not need to bring your utility box out. You can just simply buy spacers. And I have some here. They're made by Gardner Bender and these are an eighth of an inch spacer. They kind of look like little Lego blocks. And what you do is you fold them up like that. They snap into place and uh, I'm going to use three, that's about the thickness. Cut them like that, and you just put them in behind like that, and in it goes. Pretty simple. Well, I managed to cover the whole wall with this pine, and it looks really good. And I also put a weathered strip up in the top. But now I've got to work on the trim around this window. And I've got a few pieces left over. Um, you know, I just gotta put these around like here and cut them off. I could put a ledge here, but it's not gonna be something like this. This is a little scrawny. I've got something else. Another freebie that was being thrown out was this piece of wood here. And I think I can make that into a breakfast table. Now, of course, it's a little rough right now, and it even has a warp in it. But a little sanding and a little straightening out, I think I can make that work. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to work on the trim. And I had to borrow a little table saw for this. Along with the milled lumber, I also had a few cast off slab pieces I've been saving for trim. I thought it would be better to cut them with an old, worn, rusty handsaw, but I was wrong. I went back to the power tools to give the window ledge a nice snug fit. And the one I used the most was the belt sander. Fortunately, the other tool I used a lot didn't take any power at all.
I'm glad I got my cutting done, as outdoors it was starting to rain. For the table, I first used a generous amount of wood glue on the support pieces and then secured them down with wood screws. This removed the warp on the tabletop. Instead of the combination of polyurethane and stain I used on the wall boards, for the tabletop I used a pine oil stain instead. This was a lot darker and really brought out the wood grain. In the last video, I included this shot of my big pile of cut off lumber I used for firewood. But only a week later, the pile was gone. Well, after a week of keeping the cabin warm enough that the glue, and the varnish, and the stain would dry, I pretty well used up all of my cut offs. Guess I'll have to get some more. Now don't panic, I won't make you watch me nailing each board. It's time for a little speed up. And here's the result. And by the way, that lower middle part, it's not covered because the counter will be there. Now it's starting to come together. It's looking like a cabin. A little bit of rustic appeal, but I've also hopefully added some color and personality. I want this area to be inviting because this is where I get up in the morning and look out the window and I'm inspired by this gorgeous view. I can sit here and have a coffee if I want, or, and this is the bonus, I can add a fold up table and I can have my breakfast, lunch or dinner here as well. The only thing it needs is something to sit on. And I've got the little stool I built. Now I got a feeling it's a little high. I'm gonna have to chop a little bit off the legs, but that's okay. This is the right height. It's about three feet high. The counter needs a little bit more smoothing out, but it's a start. I mean, I love this piece of wood. It was, it was again, it was a cast off. Somebody threw it out. They didn't want it, but I did, because it's exactly what I was looking for. You know, I've tried to give it a little bit of appeal. I've added, you know, like old camera and, you know, a few things I found. Oh, this is a piece of coral I got in Newfoundland. Now, in all my renovation videos, I try to give a general idea of how much it cost me. And this time, uh, the pine, these pine boards that you've, I've got on the walls, they came out to, I think, around 65 cents a foot 
which is a total of about $120. Now that was before the price of uh, diesel went up, so they're even more expensive now. I spent about $25 on hinges, $25 on nails and screws, and this was surprising to me, I spent $85 on like varnishes, like finishing, like this polyurethane, the stain. It all adds up. You want to make it look pretty, it's going to cost you. Uh, so I, the total was $255 Canadian or $185 US. Now that's not too bad. I mean, it looks nice, but the big pig, the big consumption here was energy. I'm trying to be off the grid and I'm using power tools and they use a lot. For example, the uh, miter saw, it peaked at almost 1900 watts, but it typically ran about a thousand watts. The table saw peaked at 1300 watts, but ran constantly around 900 watts. The oscillating saw wasn't that bad. It was only 200 watts, but the biggest pig was actually the belt sander. Although it only ran on 375 watts, I just had a lot to sand. All the, all, everything on the wall has been sanded down at least a little, and it added up. And it should have only taken me a few days to do this renovation, but because I was constantly running out of power and having to recharge the batteries, it took longer. So a big note that if you're trying to be off the grid and you have to use AC power tools with an inverter, they're pigs. Now, I'm not ready to cook because I'm still working on it, so how can I try it out? I think I know one way. That's not something I have up my sleeve. It was in my pocket. Not a nice day out there. It's actually rain and sleet. It's the perfect excuse to be indoors in the cabin with a nice warm fire and a cold beverage. This is a Molson. I think everybody's familiar with Molson. However, this one's a little bit different because there is no alcohol. It is a Molson Excel. And it's foamy. Whoa, that's got quite the head on it. But how does it taste? Oh, I think this is the beer equivalent to a blow up doll. I mean, it kind of looks like a beer, but it doesn't have any personality. I guess it's thirst quenching, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd try one out. Well, at least that amber tone does blend well with the wood on my tabletop. Canada doesn't want us to drink anymore. The taxes on beer are going up in a few days. So I thought I'd try it. But as far as the renovation goes, I think there was a big improvement from the old to the new. So my quest for a good tasting non-alcoholic beer is probably going to take a little bit more study. But as far as making the cabin a little bit more cozy, I think I at least accomplished that. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out my others as well. Okay, it's not that bad, but mm, it still needs a little flair. Cheers. And if you'd like a notice of my next video, please hit the subscribe button.